Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, we're gonna talk about when estrogen drops, there is a whole slew of brain chemicals that go with it. And this is giving so many of you brain fog, irritability, hot flashes, trouble sleeping, uh, depression, anxiety. If you got one of those, you wanna listen to this video because not only am I gonna explain why, always I'm hoping to give you some insight on how much control you have and what you can do to bring these brain chemicals back. So about 10, 15 years ago, as I watched all these perimenopausal women flood into my office with all kinds of brain problems, a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, a lot of trouble sleeping that wouldn't go, to, go away, I was deep into understanding fasting. I was spending 20 hours a week really diving into the research on fasting. And in that, I was also looking at the research on hormones. And I came across a study that showed, it blew my mind, and it showed that when estrogen goes down, there are over 12 neurochemicals that go with it. And it was like a mind-blowing experience when I read the study because I was like, wait, we're not just losing estrogen, we're losing over 12 neurochemicals. No wonder this experience is so difficult. And then I started to look into what these neurochemicals are. And in my new book, Age Like a Girl, I call these new neurochemical, I call these neurochemicals estrogen's girl gang. Because estrogen is ridiculously powerful. She did, I mean, she let an egg out every month and then she went and bathed your brain. She's nourished your joints. She kept your bones strong. She did so many things. And she had a team of neurochemicals that did that with her. And that, the, that girl gang, I'll just throw them out here. I go extensively into them in the book. But is everything from dopamine, serotonin, acetylcholine, glutamate, GABA, oxytocin, BDNF, melatonin, glucose, and insulin. There you go. There they all are. That's her girl gang. Don't worry, I'm gonna break this down. So you're not just losing estrogen. You're not just losing progesterone. You are actually losing a massive amount of neurochemicals, which is why you feel so horrible. I wanna go through three specific ones because these are really important that we bring up because here's what's so cool about neurochemicals. This is what's so cool about it. You don't have to get it from a medication. You can use your lifestyle to get it. So it's not a doomsday because estrogen's girl gang is all left vulnerable now because estrogen left the building. You can bring the girl gang back without the presence of estrogen and you can do it through your lifestyle. So if you feel like your brain has gone off, you can use your lifestyle to bring these back. So these are the three I wanna talk about on this video. Number one, oxytocin. But oxytocin is our co connection hormone. This is why our neurotransmitter, this is why all of a sudden we connect differently. We can't do superficial conversations. We don't want shallow connection. We want deep, meaningful connection as we go through this experience. I'll talk more on that in a moment. BDNF. BDNF is brain fertilizer. It helps you hold on to new information. And estrogen brought BDNF to you every single month. Third one, melatonin. Remember our friend melatonin? That made it so that when it went, got dark, we got sleepy. And now it gets dark and we're not sleepy or we're waking up in the middle of the night. That's because estrogen stimulated melatonin. So how do we start to court these neurotransmitters and bring them back? So let's start with oxytocin. A 2019 study found that women have more oxytocin than men. And it also can make us warmer. I didn't know that, that's kind of cool. Like oxytocin makes us warmer, like temperature warmer, but it also makes us more emotionally sensitive. Yep, let's just own it. So in the amygdala, the fear center of the brain, a woman has more oxytocin receptor sites than a man, which gives us the ability to access a different stress response. It's called tend and befriend. And so when we're under stress, we go looking for oxytocin. But when estrogen left the building, we become less oxytocin sensitive and all of a sudden we have to double down on activities that bring oxytocin back in. 
And there are a lot of them. We'll go through them here in a moment. Um, I'm going to specifically go th through three ways. But I want you to know that if you're feeling less of that connection, it's because you have to go seeking oxytocin. She doesn't naturally come to you anymore because estrogen's gone. Now, what's interesting before I go into the three ways is that there was a 2024 review in the Journal of Endocrinology that explains that oxytocin levels decline alongside estrogen as we go through menopause. And this decline makes us more susceptible to mood disorders and depression, anxiety, and we feel a little less sociable. So I was just on a podcast called Decoded today. I was interviewed on this podcast. And um, the, the, it was a beautiful um, woman who's, got, who's a therapist and doing some cool things in the mental health space. And she was telling me how she's seen in her practice so many couples that are splitting apart as they go through the menopausal experience. We also are seeing in the front headlines something called gray divorce. And we're watching celebrities divorce left and right as, as front page news. But what we're not talking about in that is that when our oxytocin levels go down, we feel less like connecting. And I actually want to re pattern that and say we feel the superficial connections. We need deep connections. So if you're in a relationship where your spouse is giving you that deep connection, you feel incredibly supported by your spouse, then your oxytocin levels may be higher than somebody who's feeling very unsupported in your marriage. And that's where we start to see a change in, how pe in, in whether a marriage is going to make it through menopause or a marriage isn't going to make it through menopause because of this oxytocin system. So we want to keep oxytocin high. So let me explain three ways that science says you can bring oxytocin back. First is my favorite, which is practice altruism. Right now, in this time of life, in this moment in history, being altruistic to other people might be a good idea, not just for us, but for humankind in general. And there was a study, 2021 study, in the Journal of Neuroscientists found that volunteering, generosity, doing something nice for other people boosts your oxytocin levels. So if you want more oxytocin, if you want to feel better, when's the last time you smiled at people on the street? You thanked people for doing small little things for you. That's what we're talking about when we, when we say altruism. Okay, second thing that will bring oxytocin back, my favorite. Storytelling. So there was a ground, groundbreaking a study done by a neuroeconomist, Paul Zak. He published in a journal called Cerebrum. And he showed that emotionally compelling stories boost oxytocin in both the storyteller and the listener. Now, in today's world, guess who our storytellers are? The TV. Well, when you're watching it on the TV, you're not getting oxytocin. But if you're in a human interaction with another person and you're sharing stories around your life and you're putting yourself back into these joyful moments and you're telling somebody about it, you're boosting your own oxytocin and you're boosting the listener's oxytocin. So gather two women together, menopausal women together, and start sharing stories. In, in Age Like a Girl, I share a couple of stories of women that started um, gathering and doing um, and, and sharing their own personal journey within like a, a ladies group. I have a story in here about uh, a friend of mine who started to write uh, a memoir for her kids. Anytime we step in and we look back and we look at joyful experiences and we tell something that lit us up in, the, in maybe 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, you telling that story is going to give you oxytocin just like it did the day the story happened. So tell all the good stories you can tell to everybody you know, and you're getting your own oxytocin system. Third thing for oxytocin is to meditate. So during menopause, when the oxytocin system is low and you are craving alone time, which happens to a lot of women, in, embrace learning to meditate. A 2022 study found that when people practice loving kindness meditations, a practice of going within, 
and feeling warmth and compassion towards yourself, maybe you could even project that out to other people, that you will increase your plasma oxytocin levels. In fact, we're gonna do this right here, right now on this video. Women, we are not good at bragging about, our, about ourselves. We become selfless. So on this video, right here, right now, I want you to put in the comments what you love about yourself. Men, you can put it in too if you want. Because when you, I want you to feel brave enough to do this. Community, I want you to go in and cheer this person on. And I want you to amplify this person's excitement for something they love about themselves. Because when you go in there on that comment and you put, I love this part of me, I appreciate this part of my personality, you are getting oxytocin right after this video, which is already helping your brain. Okay, second neurotransmitter we're diving into is BDNF brain-derived neurotropic factor, and it is like miracle grow. It helps you regrow these neurons. Remember that you have this neurochemical change of the girl gang that's shifting, but you also have old neurons that are sloughing away and new neurons that are forming. And so what we're, what's happening is that your brain is primed to learn new things. That doesn't, for some of us, that doesn't feel like it. So BDNF helps you form neuronal pathways so that your thoughts and your, and your grabbing onto information can be so much stronger. It boosts learning and it helps you get better at something and it will help you improve faster. And a 2019 review noted that BDNF is also great for short and long-term memory as it helps you encode memories faster and remember things more quickly. We also have evidence from a JAMA uh, publication of neurolo uh, JAMA Neurology found that BDNF is neuroprotective. So those of you worried about Alzheimer's and dementia, if you can access BDNF as you go through the aging process, through the menopausal process, it's also neuroprotective and it will lower the risk of dementia. Okay, this is gold, you guys. This is how much control you have. And so we want, oh, this is another one before I go into how you get more BDNF. A 2024 review found that BDN, BDNF and estrogen work together to increase fat burning, prevent weight, and prevent weight gain in women. Are you convinced? Okay, check this out. I have a free fasting guide for you all. It's free. And it's gonna teach you all the basics of fasting. It's gonna teach you how to kill hunger when you fast, which is really cool. And it's gonna show you how to break your fast among many other things. All you gotta do is click on the link below and enjoy. Okay, so how do we increase BDNF? There are three ways. Exercise and specifically weightlifting. So when you weightlift, what ends up happening is you break down that muscle and it forms a metabolite that goes up into the brain and stimulates BDNF. This is why lifting heavy weights right now is really good. And there was a 2019 study that said stressing your muscles to produce lactate. Lactate is what makes your muscles sore. Cause uh, uh, is, well, that lactate that makes your muscles sore actually travels up to your hippocampus and improves the learning and memory centers of your brain by making your hippocampus produce more BDNF. Yay, that's cool, you're getting fit and your brain is getting stronger. Okay, second one to increase, increase BDNF. What's my favorite thing to talk about? Fasting. Intermittent fasting, there was a 2020 review that found that intermittent fasting is another way to increase BDNF. It found shorter fasts, something around 15, 16 hours can enhance BDNF and cognitive performance. Third thing, walking, easy. According to a 2025 meta-analysis, you're simply going for a walk increases BDNF. That's something I'm gonna do after this video. So you don't get quite as big of a boost as from exercise or fasting, but walking daily keeps your BDNF levels up. Okay, the third member of the Gerald gang that we're talking about on this video, hang with me, please don't leave me. I want you to know all this information so you can appreciate and enjoy uh, the menopausal journey and you can land in your post-menopausal years the best version of you yet. So melatonin. So estrogen would actually go up into the brain and stimulate melatonin production. And melatonin is a main member of the girl gang. And it's found that 
estrogen helps your brain decide when to release melatonin. And so there is a timekeeper in your brain. I've done videos all on sleep and melatonin, so I'm sure my team will link those in here. But when you don't have estrogen, what happens is your body, the timekeeper of the brain, doesn't know when to secrete melatonin. So you've got to train it. You've got to teach it how, where it should, it should start to train, make melatonin. So of course, you could take a melatonin supplement, but just take it at the time that your body's supposed to have it, which would be before bed. Hopefully you know that. When it comes to melatonin, I've heard a lot of people say that they find that they don't, the, they, the melatonin supplement doesn't work. So let's talk about dosage. A one milligram pill is plenty. Higher amounts like five to 10 milligrams, they don't always provide additional behavior, or, or I'm sorry, additional benefit. Um, and they might blunt your own melatonin's production. So let's make sure we keep it up at around one milligram. Don't go crazy. Don't start throwing melatonin down your mouth. Second thing is to avoid electronics. So let's talk about this. Um, you need to be in a rhythm with light. So we need morning light to get that red light. We need midday light so you can tell your body, hey, here we are in the middle of the day. And we especially need red light at the end of the day. And that red light at the end of the day is what is going to tell your body the, to get melatonin the most. So you should go for a walk during sunset. But if you come back and you get on electronics, especially an hour before bed, blue light from electronics suppresses your body's natural melatonin production. And there was a 2019 review that found that blue light exposure before bed lowered melatonin, decreased deep sleep, and increased wakefulness throughout the whole night. So let's get off our screens. Okay, third thing is let's sleep in the dark. So. At 55, I can tell you that I now sleep with a mask on, a sleep mask so that no light comes in. So some people have blackened curtains, but we do know that from a 2010 study that even normal room light exposure can decrease melatonin release by 80%. So let's make sure that we're sleeping in the dark. Okay, so those were three members of the gang, oxytocin, uh, uh, BDNF, and melatonin. They're a key. And what I'm really bringing forward in Age Like a Girl, and what I hope you understand in this vid video, is just because there is this massive neurochemical shift going on, you're not powerless. You can use your lifestyle to bring some of these neurochemicals back. So those of you have been following for me for a while, put in the comments which one of these activities you like the best. We're a community here. And I'm really excited for my new book to come out. It's coming out in December of 2025. It's ready for pre-orders. So if you've pre-ordered it, put it in the comments. I'd love to see who's pre-ordered it. I always appreciate all your support. And I'll tell you that I am here to help you make the best decisions for you. I'm not teaching you to think like me. I'm giving you information so that you make educated decisions for you that make your life that much easier. And what's happening in the menopausal space right now is we're not talking about what's happening that is good. And what's happening that is good is your brain is rewiring itself, your neurochemicals are shifting, and so does your lifestyle. If you shift your lifestyle with it, doing some of the things we talked about here, your menopausal journey will be much smoother. And when you get to the other side, where you are post-menopausal, you will experience the benefit of a newer, more powerful, more focused, more energized brain, because that is what is supposed to happen in this journey. So. As always, I hope that helps. I know a lot of you guys are looking to target certain areas, so you can check out the next video where I go through the five things you can do to get rid of flabby arms, doing push-ups and tricep dips. Do as many as you can until you're like, oh, no more. Now we've released all that sugar. Go in the kitchen and eat some protein. Maybe you eat some eggs, 